Welcome back to our channel, Anton Quigley, bringing the latest tips, tricks and techniques for your contemporary painting and drawing needs. And I hope everyone is well and safe at home. Today is Tutorial Tuesday, where I bring you a new tutorial every single week to help you develop your own artistic skills during lockdown. This week, we are going to be looking at perspective. But more specifically, we're going to be looking at one point perspective. So I'm going to be using some of the techniques and tips that I use within my work and hopefully you can understand it. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. So why perspective? Well, perspective is a fundamental element within art and I use it all the time within my own work being an urban artist but I use it quite loosely. If I was an architect, for example, then it would be an essential skill that I would have to master. And it was an architect that invented it back in 1450 in Florence by the name of Filippo Brunelleschi. This artist actually created the designs for the Dromo in Florence. So there's three types of perspectives. There's one point perspective, two point perspective, and three point perspective, which is quite advanced. Today's tutorial is gonna be concentrating on one point perspective. But before we go all into that, I just want to go through some of the materials that you'll need for today's activity. First of all, you need a piece of paper. Secondly, one fine liner, a pencil, a resource image to look at, a plastic wallet and a ruler and a rubber. So there's two words that are going to keep up cropping up again and again when using perspective. One of them being the horizon line and secondly being the vanishing point. And those are the first two things that we're gonna look at and master within our perspective drawing. So first of all, what I'm going to do is set up my piece of paper. And what I'd like you to do is put three horizontal lines equally spaced down the piece of paper. Okay, so you've drawn your three lines now, and I want you to pay attention to the top one. What I've just done there, I've just labelled it horizon line, because it is an important part of perspective, and we'll discuss it as we go along. What you'll also see me doing is putting two dots on there. That's because we're going to try and use two uh, goes, if you will, at doing this first activity. Uh, but you'll only need one of them at this time. So once you put your dot on there, you are then going to start drawing a box. It can be a rectangle, it can be a square, but just make sure that it's on the actual line. Um, and also make sure that it's drawn lightly and the lines are straight when you do the vertical ones and same for the horizontal. So hopefully you've drawn that box relatively easily and make sure it's nice and lightly. What I want you to do is pay attention to the two corners of the box there. So on the left hand side and I want you to draw them towards that dot. That dot is the vanishing point. So again draw them lightly, top corner goes right to the dot and then same on the bottom. And what you'll find is that you've got a, a box which is like a never ending uh, box going into distance. The second thing that I've done there, I've just put a second line in to almost shrink the box. So you can now see the uh, left hand side of the box and then you can also see the front facing part of the box. Now, what you've got to remember is when putting that line in on the side, that also has to be vertical. It can't be slanted, otherwise the perspective is going to look wrong. So I've done my box now, I'm just outlining it in fine liner. What I'm going to do now is going to do it again. I'm just going to time lapse at this time, just so you can see another outcome. So what you can see, the final thing that I've done now is that I've shaded the side of the box, just so you can see it looks a little bit more 3D. And what also you'll notice is that the dot is either side of the box. If it's on the left hand side, you will see uh, the left hand side of the box and if the dot's on the right hand side you'll see the right hand side of the box so just bear that in mind and hopefully you'll get to grips with it as we go along and do the next activity okay so we're moving straight on to the second one now which is going to be below the horizon line so i've put my vanishing points on there as i say for one box you only need one at this time and i've started to draw out my rectangle or square underneath nice and lightly drawn and once you've completed your box, what I'd like you to focus on, on look at is the three corners of the box. Now these three corners, the ones that are closest to the vanishing point, 
um, you'll see it at one of the corners of the box. You'd have to go through the box, ignore that one, and just follow what I'm doing here. So I'm using a straight line from that corner and then two more corners on there. Now once you've drawn those, again you'll end up with this almost box that looks like it's an infinity going into the distance and never ending. You're going to put those horizontal and vertical lines to decide the depth of your box. Just make sure that you mirror the horizontal and the vertical line that you can see that I'm pointing out. It's really essential that you do that. If you do it wonky, it's not going to look right. So I'm making sure when I'm doing this line here now, it's really horizontal and I'm just drawing across that line. And then the vertical one, again, it's really straight and just, just like the one of the, the other side of the box on there. And there you go, I've got my box completed. And as you should be able to see, I can see the top of it now, which I wasn't able to be uh, seen before when you're drawing something on the horizon line. But when it's below the horizon line, you should be able to see something on the top. Okay, great, so you nearly finished the first exercise. And this one, you're gonna be doing a box above the horizon line. What I'd like you to do is put your dot on the horizon and then start drawing out your box above the horizon line. Try and do a different shape. So it's good to mix up a little bit more and be a little bit more experimental than doing the same one that you have been doing recently. And then also maybe play around with the depth of the box. So if you've been doing some shallow boxes, maybe a little bit uh, deeper on there or vice versa. So oh, I can see here, I'm just sketching them out rather really lightly and then I'll go back in my ruler um, to make sure it's nice and neat. As I say, sometimes I don't even use a ruler, I just do it uh, freehand, uh, but it's entirely up to you how confident you feel. Okay, so we're just finishing up on there, just highlighting it with the fine liner. And that's it, the first activity done. To make this page look a little bit more attractive, what I've done is started to shade in some of the boxes, as you can see there, and I've also labeled it. So I've just labeled where the vanishing points are, the horizon lines are, and on the horizon line, below and above the horizon line to make it look a little bit more presentable. So that's it for the first activity. And um, hopefully you're able to follow it okay. All it was just literally getting you to understand what the horizon line was, the vanishing points, and just making sure that you're aware of something, what it looks like above the horizon line, on it and below it. What you can do if you want to make it a little bit more challenging, is just mix up the shape a little bit more. So instead of just doing a box standard four-sided shape, then maybe it'll be a little bit more creative, or even you can even cut out a section of your box and then you've almost got creating a window um, and I'll put some relay of some images over the top there so you can see what I'm on about. What we're going to do now for the second exercise is put all of those skills and techniques into a real life scenario of a real image looking at where how we look at the horizon how we place all of those um, leading lines are vanishing to the vanishing point and then translating that back into our drawing. Okay, so I've got a image in front of me. It's a piece that I've been working on recently uh, in preparation for a larger piece. And what I've got in my hand is just got a fine liner and a ruler. And what I'm actually doing is following all the leading lines that are going into the distance on this road. Now, whether that'll be the double yellow lines, the edges of the pavements, uh, the bottom of the building, uh, the top of the building, and also the top and the bottom of the windows or doors. So if you follow those lines, just put your ruler along that line and then draw them all. What you will see is that all the lines seem to lead to one point. This point where they all meet is going to be act as your vanishing point. And if you put your ruler horizontal on that vanishing point, that is going to be your horizon line. So that's the next activity that I'd like you to do. First of all, is just on your image, overlap some of those images on there. So I've just come up with another alternative, is that if you put your image that you're, you know, your resourceful image that you're using, put it inside a plastic wallet, you can actually use a permanent marker and draw over the top of that. That'll save you drawing all over the image, especially if it's uh, an older image, uh, something that you just want to keep hold of. Then if I take out the image, what you should be left with is a series of lines. Now it might seem very complicated, but all it is is just those um, perspective lines going towards the vanishing point. And you should also see the horizon line that I've drawn on there. 
What I want you to consider now is drawing out a rectangle on your page um, of the same proportions as your image. And then what I'd like you to do is start putting those lines on there just paying attention to where the lines are leading. So if the lines are leading up to the top, um, whereabouts on the page is it gonna be on there? Okay, so I've drawn out all my uh, lines now, my piece of work. But one thing I am gonna need to do is put my horizontal lines in and my vertical lines. Now, if you just look what I'm doing there with the ruler, I'm looking at the edges of the building, just using a fine line of just establishing where the vertical lines are going. And you will also see, I, I extend the line just enough so you can see that it's on the edges of the piece of paper. So when it comes to my drawing, I know exactly where I'm gonna be putting my lines in. So the hor horizontals and verticals, remember what I said before on the first um, activity, they must be horizontal or vertical. It's only the leading lines of the tops and the bottom of the windows and doors and the bottom and the top of the buildings that are going towards the vanishing points. These lines are not going towards the vanishing points. So it's something that you just need to be aware of and consider when you're doing your drawings. Now, what I'm going to do now is put in those vertical and horizontal lines in and then I can start actually sketching out the basic shapes of the drawing. So I finished my sketch now. I'm gonna continue working back and refine it with fine liner and finished off with a time lapse for you to watch. But if this method works for you, then fantastic. If it doesn't, there's hundreds and hundreds of methods out there that you've just got to trial and error and see what works for you. But also just bearing in mind, it takes practice. You might not get it on your first go. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. It's always welcome. If you want to see similar videos, then hit the subscribe button and tap that notification bell. But until next time, guys, see you later. Bye.